Hey guys, what's going on? This is Bunny Muffin. If you are looking for the easiest ways to find three-star units, uh, this is the game to do it. We're gonna be doing something a little different today. We're gonna be doing the Draconic build, and a lot of people have been asking me, like, when should I go for this? Well, if you hit it on 2-1, this is a game to go for it. We're gonna see what we can hit, what three stars we can hit, and what we can do after that. So I'm gonna do a little quick little level up because I have a lot of gold, and because I want to hit two and three costs, because I wanna hit more sets and go for a set carry. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people have been wondering like and asking me like, hey, I've been playing Draconic and it's been doing really well. Can I play it every game? The answer is no. You can only play it in very specific games. Obviously, hitting it on 2-1 is the best thing ever. If you hit it on maybe like 2-3 or 2-5, that's probably like the latest you could do it on in this current patch. Obviously, that is subject to change as things change in future patches. But right now, that's what I would recommend. Uh, if you have it on anywhere from 2-1 to 2-3, it's good to go for. But... Why aren't you playing like some of the S and A tier comps that you can find on my website, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta, along with the little meta snapshot that I do every single Friday. So what does Draconic do? Draconic gives you these little eggs every single turn after every PvP round. And essentially it just gives a chance to give you some loot. It could be gold, it could be champions. And if you get to five Draconic, you could get items as well. This is definitely like the stereotypical fun trait of the set because you can get some crazy combinations with it. The version I'm playing right now revolves around carry set. We only have one star set, but we'll get him to three star eventually. Uh, essentially what you want to do is build Infinity Edge and Bloodthirster on him. This is the best combo. I'd say like a week ago, this was one of the more meta compositions, but it's kind of fallen out of favor recently because better things just got discovered. But again, if you get perfect starts for a certain composition, you could definitely go for it. And that's what we do have here. We have two large eggs. Oh, and keep in mind, there are different sizes of eggs. We actually have one small and one medium. The bigger the egg is, the longer it takes to hatch, but the better loot that you get. So it's like, bigger risk, bigger reward, as they say. But we ended up getting torched in those last two rounds, so we are going into the carousel. We're going to get another sword here, that way we could build the infinity edge. Those were the two exact items that I was talking about, which we're going to grab here. And there we go, there's our first egg. You see that it gave us a bunch of champions. We actually got a set two star because we got a bunch of sets from that. So that is more than welcome. We're going to level up, drop in a trundle so we get three skirmishers because skirmishers are broken both as an early game trait and just as a composition in general right now. Uh, but yeah, this team, it's looking pretty nice so far. We got an early two star set, so we should stop the bleeding that we've been experiencing so far in stage two. Oh man, this guy's got abominations on two five. That is... It's a pretty good start for Abominations, if I do say so myself, but let's see what the set can do. He did a little, like, punch there. He healed up a little bit. Oh, just fun fact, guys. Uh, regular Bloodthirster is better than Shadow Bloodthirster, but, you know, from the armory, the Shadow Negatron was all I could get, so that's why I have that item right now. And we do end up losing this round, so a little bit unfortunate there. On the good note, though, we did get an extra egg, so we have three eggs right now. So we have one small, one medium, one large, and these should all hatch in the next round. Whenever they start shaking like they do right now, that's when you know you're going to get a bunch of loot. Uh, this guy also has abominations. Why does everyone have abominations? It seems like everyone just magically got it. So it looks like even though I got a great start, so did everyone else. So this is going to make for a more interesting game. It's not going to be completely steamroll in that sense. We did lose our loss streak which is a little unfortunate, but we get an Udyr here. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. And then we get three things of loot. We got a ton of gold. We got an additional set and a Zyra. So all in all, pretty good. We got like, I think, 10 gold there, which is, you know, that's more than welcome. Do keep in mind that you cannot get an additional egg on neutral rounds. So if you are just like not running Draconics, but you have them in your shop, don't play them for like a round thinking you're going to get a egg from the neutral round. So just one thing to keep in mind. But of course, we are playing these guys right now, so we're just going to keep them in there. Uh, the build I like to do is four brawlers. You can find this build. I'll leave a link here. It's uh, bunnymuffins.lol slash meta hashtag set. And that should take you right to the build. But essentially, all we are going to do is do what's called a slow roll. We're probably going to do it on level seven this game. Sometimes you could do it on level eight if you're super lucky. But I think with average luck, most of the time you do it on level 7. So what that means, if you don't know what slow rolling is, it's essentially just rolling down to 50 every single turn in order to maximize your chances of getting 3 star units. And in this case, we are going to try to do that with set. Uh, since he's a 2 cost, level 7 is a very efficient level to try to get a 3 star set on. Uh, right now we are going to do a level up. It's only 12 gold, we still have 36, and we bought some brawlers. So we almost have four brawlers. We're just missing, I think, one of them. We're missing Warwick 
or uh, Bola Bear, but we'll get him pretty soon enough, and that is a very big power spike in the mid game. So after winning a couple rounds, we are back on the carousel. We do have a spatula. Uh, we also build Guardian Angel on set because that is a very great third item. Any sword item for the third is nice, but Guardian Angel gives him an extra life. Uh, as for items to build here, we could do something like a Warmogs for Nunu, but there's only a Shadow Belt there. Actually, someone took it. So we could just, we don't really have much choices. It's either Negatron or a Club. I guess I'm going to grab the Negatron. Uh, maybe we could build something for Ash later, something like a Runons is pretty good on her. So we ended up win streaking all throughout stage three, which is super, super nice. That means we get bonus gold in the neutral round from the win streak bonus, which I believe is three gold out of five or greater win streak. And then we get a tier, we get another belt. So we could build, I think, Warmogs. We get an Ash 2 there. Uh, actually, no, we can't build Warmogs. We only have one of them. Uh, but we get an Ash 2. We are looking for some of the other... Draconic such as Heimerdinger, but we might not be able to hit that until much later. We get additional units there, which is really great, but this is where we start our slow roll. You notice how we're level 7 right now? This means that we are going to roll down to 50 every single turn, and right now I'm only going for 3 Draconic, so I'm actually going to sell the Zyra because I do not plan on playing her later, so getting a 3-star Zyra isn't that useful. I'd rather just focus my bench on getting a 3-star set. And one important thing, you need to leave a spot open on your bench, in order to get an egg. So if you fill your bench up with units, you will not get an egg on that turn. So you kind of waste playing the synergy. So just one thing to keep in mind. Perhaps I could have sold someone else such as Karma or Ivern because uh, like, I'm probably not gonna play them. So I, maybe I could have kept the Zyra. Also this game, since we are doing super well, we're at 84 life, we are gonna do a slow roll on level eight instead of level seven. Uh, and this is just one of those games where we're super high health and we're able to do that. But if we were like 62 health or 59 health, like some of these other guys in our lobby, we would definitely do a slow roll on level 7 instead. Uh, so with that in mind, we are on 4-2 right now. What item do we want here? Perhaps we want a bow for Ash. None of these other items are really that great. And since we have so much gold because we got a ton of gold from the Draconic trait, I think we're safe to just level up to level 8 and just chill from there. So we leveled up there. We don't need to start rolling yet. We could eco back up to 50 and then roll down for set 3, because uh, we are going to get a lot of stuff from the eggs. I'm going to replace the Udyr with a Zyra. I probably should have done that a lot earlier, um, and pretty much just go from there, because Zyra is a better unit than Udyr. I'm going to keep Udyr on my bench just in case I get a Heimerdinger, because I will be wanting to run 5 Draconic for a little bit, but it just won't be in my final composition, most likely. So let's ruin on this Ash. For some reason, you're not allowed to put shadow items on the Ash. Anyone, anyone find that issue? But once I put the Negatron on him first, or on her first, and then put on the shadow component right after, it's able to build that way. But if you put the shadow component on the unit directly, I often have a lot of trouble uh, getting the item on. Maybe it's like uh, you need to put it on her shadow instead of her. I don't, I don't really know how riot coding works, but. I have heard that they say it's not the best, especially given their client, but we end up losing here. So we're on a two game losing streak and not looking too good, but we were at like 84 life before, so we're still pretty healthy. What's in this box? We get another Zyra and Ash. So Ashes are welcome, Zyras are not. So I'm gonna sell the Zyra because there's not enough space on my bench to get her three star. Um, so we're not at 50 gold yet. So I'm gonna chill for a little bit longer and then roll down once I go above that. Also keep in mind, we are missing Warwick for four Brawler. Brawlers are really going to help us stabilize in this mid game, uh, but it might be too late for that. So we might end up just hitting Bola Bear before we hit this Warwick. Uh, are we able to end our losing streak? I think we are because this set's pretty powerful and this guy just has a Gragas. He's also going for Draconic, so we are getting a little contested. So the reason why Draconics are so good and so easy to get three stars with is because you do not have to roll that much to get three stars because the draconic trait gives you a lot of free units so that just makes it like one of the more fun comps in the game uh, so we have the spatula i don't really need to build anything from the spatula so i think i just go for some defensive item or build another ash item maybe a crit for an ie or like flex it for like a shroud or something like that might be a little useful but i don't really have a use for the spatula right now so for some reason i just see a heimerdinger there so i'm gonna go ahead and play him get the <laughs> get the five what do you call it the five Draconics until I am about to lose. Uh, so I'll just play those guys for a little bit, get a ton of loot, and pretty much just have fun from that because that is the best thing you can ask for right now. 
So I'm actually not gonna roll yet. The reason why is because I need space on my bench for an egg. So if I do end up rolling and I find another uh, Heimerdinger, for example, or like I find a Warwick or a Volibear, I won't be able to actually get a new egg on my bench. So I'm gonna just chill with what I have right now and probably roll next turn uh, where I increase the chances for me to be able to hit like one of my pairs right now and hopefully free up some space on my bench. We're able to win this round. Like, Keimerdinger is super, super strong. He just needs two-star, and he needs a ton of attack speed. So if you're able to get that, he's one of the best units in the game. So we're going to roll now. We get an Ash there, so that's nice. It gives us one extra spot on our bench. We finally find the set, so that frees up a ton of room. So now we could feel free to roll a lot more than we normally would. Uh, there's a Nunu too. We're still missing the four Brawlers, but this is what I'm talking about when I talk about a slow roll. It's just rolling down to 50 every turn. All right, let's watch this set three in action because this is what we actually needed in our composition. That's what we were going for from the beginning of the game. Let's see what he does. There's a big punch there, one shots that guy, but he only hit one unit. He needs to do AOE, and right now he's only doing single target, so this fight is actually much closer than it should be, but I still think he's able to clean it up. Nice hit there. Yeah, Scion's pretty weak after he gets his uh, first attack speed buff. Like He's really strong right as he gets out, but after a couple attacks, he kind of weakens a little bit. So it's like a no surprise that our set wins that fight. So now onto this new shop. Let's roll down to 50 again. So we get a bunch of gold there. We get two gloves here. And now is where we could roll for Ash 3 or wait to go to level 9. It's actually a pretty tough decision. I'm not really sure which one's better. I'm going to Thieves the Zyra because I'm probably going to sell her later in the game because you don't actually want to be running 5 Draconic in the late game. It's fine to do it when you're 68 life, but if you are 20 life, that's when you probably want to stop Playing the Draconics. Uh, so in this game, I decide to pre-level a little bit. I could probably make it to 9, get a Heimer 2-star. Uh, this guy is running the Draven Mordekaiser build. Very strong build right now. I really like that comp a lot. I've been playing it a lot, um, obviously, on my Draven-only account. Um, you guys can check out the video there of me like doing only Draven all the way to Diamond if you guys are curious about how to play only one composition. But right now, we're doing set, and he is punching a lot of people, and this Mordekaiser... Don't tell me Mordekaiser actually wins this, right? Oh, no. Oh, no, we, we, we got the GA. But, man, just look at the power of Mordekaiser. If we did not have that GA, he probably would have just finished off my entire team. Oh, yeah, in case you guys haven't noticed yet, five Draconics give these golden eggs. These eggs have, like, they just have even better loot. Uh, we got a Heimer from one of the regular ones that hatch, but I think next turn is when two of these hatch, and we'll see some crazy rewards there. Um, I actually level up here. I'm going to drop in an extra Heimerdinger um, just because, you know, Heimerdinger is a pretty solid unit. He does a lot of percent max health damage, I think, and he reduces healing on a lot of targets as well. Uh, so it's pretty useful to do. Oh, one fun fact, the turrets normally can't get CC'd, but for some reason they can get zephyr So they have like what's called like permanent Quicksilver. Uh, so Quicksilver, so Zephyr actually goes through Quicksilver now, so that actually works on the turrets. Um, however, actual CC, look at the LeBlanc, it says cannot be disabled. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind when positioning your turrets. They do not get CC'd by anything. So it's nice to put them in the corners. They eat up a lot of thresh hooks. Uh, so that's typically why I put them there instead of in the center. And now we get up two eggs hatching. These give the blue things, and just like that, you get a Heimer 2 star. I don't even know what else we got. I guess we got a bunch of items as well. There's too many things flashing on my screen. I do want to roll down for this Ash, so I'm going to do that now. I also want four brawlers because right now I am like, I'm, I'm in a little bit of a struggle bus. Okay, there's the Gragas too. I'm going to drop uh, probably another Heimer in, I guess, because like we don't have the four brawlers yet. We really just need Volibear or Warwick. Have not seen them all game, but you know what? It's okay if we have to wait a little bit longer. I'm going to put the Sunfire Cape on Nunu just because uh, it's a decent tank item. And let's see if Set, get, Set should get a good AoE here. He hit... I think like two targets there, but I think Rel shielded his whole team um, and then Tara healed them all up. But we'll have to wait till the, we get the second punch there. I think Heimerdinger did most of the damage in this fight. So even without items, Heimerdinger is doing a lot of work. Of course, Set's still pulling his weight, but a lot of this damage just got shielded by like a well-timed Rel ultimate. Uh, but we're able to finish this guy off. Actually, looking at the damage, Nunu did the most. That is actually... <laughs> Kind of silly, but on this carousel, Spear of Shojin, probably the best item for Heimerdinger. Let's see if we are able to get that. Someone else took it. I guess we go for, I don't even know, maybe like 
Bloodthirster Ash, maybe? Ionic Spark doesn't really do that much in this comp. I generally dislike using Ionic Sparks in the late game, uh, so that's why I'm not a huge fan of those there. I'm going to play this Kindred for a few turns because she gives me Mystic, and then later on I'll transfer the item onto Ash. Uh, so since we're one off Ash, let's do a quick roll down. There's Volibear, so I could play four Brawlers right now. Uh, I need to take out someone. I don't know who. Probably Ivern for Gragas, but I think I just didn't see that this turn. I probably assumed I had the four Brawlers in already, but I just made a mistake. Uh, or, sorry, take out Kindred. Uh, this is why you cannot run five Draconic in the late game. But again, since we're 59 health, we don't really care. We're going to play as greedy as possible. Uh, but if we were 20 health, like, sell the Zyra and the Udyr. Put in Gragas plus another random good unit, probably like a Garen 2-star or like a Darius 2-star. Both of them work really well in this comp because you do a mix of both magic and ability power, or magic and attack damage. Uh, as you guys can see here, like tons of attack damage from set, but once you get Heimer going, I think his turret ends up doing um, a lot of magic and true damage. So this guy shrouds our Zyra and our Heimerdinger. We have our set on his Jax, which is really nice because set can burst Jax down. One of the counters to Jax is anti-heal and burst damage. So we had the Sunfire right next to him, and we had one of our highest damage dealers right next to him. So it's like a pretty good positioning matchup that we had in this particular game. We're able to deal quite a bit of damage to him. But let's see what we get from these two eggs. We really want the big eggs because we have a lot of life, because those are going to give the biggest rewards. Ah, oh, dang, we got a small one, but... Uh, that's a blue buff, so who gets that? Probably just throw it on Heimer because mana is really good for him. So Heimer really struggles if he does not have attack speed and if he does not have mana. Oh, fun tip. Hit the boxes one at a time because you could potentially only get gold instead of instead of getting champions because your bench is too full. So it's similar to getting boxes on the PvE rounds. You just need to be a little careful. But we are at like 80 gold level 9. Let's roll it down a little bit, see what we can get. Um, I probably should be picking up the Garen. I don't know why I skipped it. And all right, we'll 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 chill around there. So let's blue buff this, this Heimerdinger. Uh, I'm not going to build these items yet because we might get an additional item from the from the eggs or maybe on the next carousel. But this... Oh, it's a Mordekaiser player again. He's got Draven 2 this time, but I don't know if that's enough. It looks like it is. He ended up killing our set, so... We might need to end up sweating a little bit this game instead of just going purely for fun the whole time. So there's another Heimerdinger. We have two of him now. Uh, there is a Zeke's on our Zyra, so we need to probably reposition her. Whenever you're running Thieves Gloves, you always have to check your items every single time. Uh, but let's roll a little bit. Nothing there. I guess we could go for Nunu 3-star, because I guess why not at this point? Holy cow, Karma 3-star. And he has a Nico on his bench. I wonder how he got that Nico, or if he got Karma 3-star before he got the Nico. That is <laughs> that is one way to beat my team, is to have a, a Karma 3. But look at our Heimer turret. It ended up doing a ton of damage, but, you know, 3-star 4 costs are pretty balanced. All right, so there's the Kindred that we needed. There's a new Heimerdinger. We're only one off Heimerdinger now, so I think I start to roll down all the way to zero to try to hit it, because, like, whenever you're one off, you want to look for your units as quickly as possible. We're also trying to hit Nunu. So I could sell the Udyr at this point because we are 25 life now. Remember how I said once you get to 25 life, you need to sell 5 Draconic. That's what we're doing right now. You can't play it the whole game. Uh, let's see what we can hit, though. Nothing quite yet. We're really looking for Nunu and Heimer and did not hit those. Uh, so let's put the Thieves Gloves probably on the Volibear because he is a 5 cost unit. We are probably going to 2 star him and he has open item slots. Uh... I guess we sell the Ivern, so let's not go for Ivern 3. Let's just focus on Heimer and Nunu. I'm not going to Nico the Nunu yet because, I mean, would it increase my chances of winning the game? Probably, but I also want to hit a 3-star Legendary, and I think this is, like, the easiest way to do it because, again, you get so many free Heimer dingers from the Draconic trait. Um, it's pretty hard to hit 3-star Legendaries otherwise. I think I've only hit maybe, like, 2 or 3 of them, maybe. In my entire time playing TFT, one of them was a Aurelian Soul when he was a uh, five cost in set three, and another one was a Yasuo in set one. I think I hit it one other time, but I don't really remember who it was. Um, but right now, we are scared of both these teams because these are two teams that beat us earlier in stage six. One was the Draven Mordekaiser build, one was the Karma guy. So we really need to hit something good in order to win this game. There's Volibear too. There's a Darius. I could go ahead and play him. 
I guess Invoker is probably better, actually. Never mind, because item, because as I said before, mana is really important for Heimerdinger, but let's keep rolling. Nothing. Okay, we get the Nunu at least, but no, no Heimerdinger. So I'm a little disappointed about that right now. We're going to drop a hat on Heimerdinger. We could sell that guy and I guess just do an extra for fun rolls right there just in case we hit and then we'd lock our shop if we end up hitting the Heimer two star. Um, I guess that way other opponents won't naturally get him in their shop if we able to if we're able to hit it and then lock it afterwards, but it doesn't really matter at that point. We're able to beat this Draven guy now. I'm not too sure what changed. The only thing that changed on our team was a Volibear uh, two star. So we're able to beat him there. We lost to the other guy with our ghosts. So now is like, we have one more turn to do this and holy cow, this is what I mean guys. The eggs just give so many extra units that it just doesn't matter. And that's why it's so easy to hit three stars whenever you're doing this comp. So if you love three stars, definitely run Draconics. Just don't do it every game. We also got a bow and a rod. So Rageblade, perfect for Heimerdinger because he just needs attack speed. That's always the best stat on him. Uh, so I do a mistake here. I grouped all the way in the back, but against Karma, you really need to spread out. So I should have people on all corners of my board because, holy cow, Karma almost one shot my Heimerdinger. My Heimer actually died, but the turret did a fadeaway shot before Heimer died. I guess we're able to beat him there. So there you go, guys. There is a Heimer 3. That's what it looks like. This is one of the easiest games to get it in because of the early Draconic starts. And because we were able to win streak, we were able to run five Draconic for a long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed that game there. Um, if you guys want to see more gameplay or more guides, go ahead and like and subscribe below if you haven't already. And turn notifications on for that. But apart from that, I will see you guys later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.